This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Dismember the body found in motor vehicle on Mona Road. The dismembered remains of a man was found in a motor vehicle on Mona Road in St. Andrew in the wee hours of Sunday morning. The grisly discovery was made in the vicinity of the University of the West Indies Mona Campus. Policeman shot and injured in Santa Cruz robbery. A police constable has been rushed to the hospital after he was shot and injured during a robbery at a supermarket in Santa Cruz on Saturday night. Preliminary reports are that sometime after 9 p.m., the policeman, who is assigned to the St. Elizabeth Quick Response Team, was at the establishment when armed men entered and held up the supermarket. It is reported that during the robbery, the policeman was shot and his service weapon stolen. It is unclear if the robbers fled with the cash from the supermarket. The injured policeman was taken to the hospital, where he has since been admitted. Three men arrested after firearm and ammunition seized in Rockford, Kingston. Three men were arrested on Friday, September 3, in connection with the seizure of a firearm and two rounds of ammunition by the Kingston Eastern Police. The illegal gun and ammunition were seized during an operation along Windward Road. Reports are that about 9.30 p.m., a team of officers was on patrol when the police observed the three men standing along the roadway. The men were accosted and searched, and a Smith & Wesson 9mm pistol and a magazine containing two 9mm cartridges were seized. The men were taken into custody. However, their identities are being withheld pending further investigations. Investigations continue. Widow of deceased farm worker begs for answers. Frustrated that she has heard nothing since she signed a paper authorizing an autopsy on her farm worker husband, Marcia Yap is pleading for answers. Her husband of 15 years, Gavin Yap, died on a Canadian farm on August 14 in what has been described as a job-related accident. An investigation was launched into his death. Right now, I don't know if they have done the autopsy on my husband. From my Sunday paper, nobody has reached out to me to say, yes, the autopsy is done. They were there pushing and prodding, wanting me to sign this thing. The distraught woman told the news from a friend's veranda last Thursday. The paperwork, she said, also gave the go-ahead for her husband's body to be released to a funeral home. In the early stages after her husband's death, Yap said she was contacted on a number of occasions by different individuals. These included Minister of Labor and Social Security Carl Samuda and other representatives from the ministry, as well as the farm where her husband worked in Canada. During those talks, she said she was officially informed that her husband died when a section of his clothing got caught in a machine and he was squeezed to death. In a release on August 16, the Labour Ministry expressed deep sadness at Gavin Yap's death. It also said Samuda had spoken with Yap's widow by phone from his tour on farms in Canada and assurance was given that the ministry would provide continued support. However, Marcia Yap told the news that the ministry's promise that it would be there for her in her time of need has not been kept. I was the one that had to reach out to the social worker to ask him to send grief counselors because I wanted somebody to talk to. He eventually sent two persons on Monday, August 29, she said. Hoping for closure, she wants to lay her husband to rest. She said she has left several unanswered messages asking someone she only knows as a Mrs. Gardner from the farm work program to get in touch with her to discuss the way forward. I don't know what is going on. I need to find out what is going on, the grieving widow lamented. She told the news that she and her stepdaughter had unsuccessfully explored getting emergency visas to go to Canada to get answers for themselves. All we asked of the Ministry of Labor was that they assist us in getting emergency visas to go to Canada. They went around and beat around the bush and they were not forthcoming, Yap said. She said she had raised the issue with Samuda during their August 16 phone conversation. I also asked about the process of the autopsy. Is it similar to Jamaica? He said he was not aware, but he said he would find out. And when he gets back, he would have gotten in touch with me. Since then, I've not heard anything from him, she claimed. Efforts to apply for a visa using an invitation letter received from a friend 
It has snagged because she does not have a death certificate for her husband. It is needed to complete the application, she said. Yap said she has also been left confused and concerned by a conversation she had with Peter Van Berlo, senior president of the family-run Berlo's Best Farm in Norfolk County, where her husband had worked for more than three decades. She noted that while Van Berlo Sr. expressed a condolence, a question he posed about her husband's health left her upset. He was saying that my husband was like a son to him, and he's wondering if he had any medical condition. Now that got me upset because we all know if they had medical conditions, they can't go on the farm work because they have to go through the medical process. So I said, no, you and I both know my husband had no medical condition. Yap related. According to Yap, her husband worked at the same farm for 34 of his 35 years as a farm hand. He operated and repaired heavy machinery. The lack of information and uncertainty about when she will be able to bury him is taking a toll. She has not been sleeping and rarely eats, as she said. She has no idea if she will be able to do her job as a teacher at Maldon High School when the new school year begins tomorrow. How can I go into a stressful environment with the stress that I am going through? She moaned. Nobody is calling. The boss has not called me again, so I don't know what is going on. I am frustrated. I am crying. I don't know what is going on, said Yap. When contacted, a social worker whose number the widow provided told the news he could not provide a response on the matter and referred questions to the Ministry of Labor and the Social Security's head office. When contacted on Friday, the Ministry's communications unit asked for emailed questions. Up to press time, there was no reply to queries submitted. Yap, meanwhile, is begging the local authorities to reach out to her. I want them to tell me what's going on and to send my husband's body here so I can bury him as he ought to be buried, she appealed. Family of Kevin Smith's victim retains a lawyer. The family of Tanika Gardner, whose throat was slashed during a religious ritual at a Montego Bay-based church last October, has engaged an attorney to represent their interest in regard to the delayed payout for her life insurance policy to her son and mother, who relatives claim are the named beneficiaries. Gardner, 39, and 38-year-old Michael Scott were killed during a sacrificial sacrament presided over by clergyman Kevin O. Smith at the Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries in Montego Bay, St. James. During the October 17 incident, 18-year-old Kevon Plummer was also fatally shot when he reportedly attacked an approaching police team with a machete. But since her death and a subsequent burial, her family said they had not been able to get any details from her employer, Appliance Traders Limited, or the insurer's Guardian Life on the status of the undetermined claims from the policy. This has fueled speculations that the mother of two, like several of Pathway's congregants, might have made changes to her life insurance and named Smith as the beneficiary. Smith died in a motor vehicle accident shortly after the bizarre incident that rocked the nation. But Gardner's sister, Shilana Gardner, who is acting with a power of attorney for the family, is rejecting the suggestion despite her failed attempts to glean information from ATL and the Guardian Life. We are having discussions with our lawyer now, because nobody is going to trick us because we're poor, she told the news last week. Because him dead, they're using this Kevin Smith rumor so that they don't have to pay us. But I will not stop until we get what is rightfully ours. Shilana's interest goes beyond representing her alien mother and nephew, as she is waiting to be reimbursed the $450,000 she spent to bury Tanika. She said there was an understanding among members of the family that she would be reimbursed when the claim is honored, although the potential payout was never disclosed. Michelle Johnson White, head of ATL's Human Resources Department, referred the news to the insurer when contacted two weeks ago, advising that the company had no further role to play in the process. While not addressing the Gardner case, Constance Hu, vice president of Employee Benefit Administration at Guardian Life, told the news that her company would only provide information on insurance policies to authorize the human resource personnel of the corporate client, beneficiaries, trustees for beneficiaries, or their legal representatives. The insurance executive explained that her company normally honors claims within five to seven days after receipt of all required information and prescribed documentation. She advised that if the beneficiary also dies before the payout is honored, the proceeds will be payable to their estate. 
But with the first anniversary of Tanika's death just six weeks away, her family is refusing to accept that she would have committed to further enrich a man that already had substantial wealth and contemptuously dictated his congregants' personal lives to the point where they would ignore the welfare of their loved ones. I look at her dead body on my phone almost every day, still hoping I could get some answers as to why she did not listen. Her father, Septimus Gardner, told the news. No, even a situation that should bring some good for her son is working against him. Insurance expert and Gleaner columnist Cedric Stevens questions the insurance approach in dealing with the issue and charged that Guardian Life has a moral duty to advise the family of the true nature of the policy. He noted what could appear to be a lack of respect and empathy on the part of the insurance company to the deceased family members who may or may not be the beneficiaries and the absence of any discussion about the contractual, ethical or regulatory duties on the part of the insurer and the deceased the former employer ATL. In the meantime, the Major Investigations Division continues its probe into Smith's estate, with his affairs reportedly being managed by his mother, who lives overseas. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.